Hello everyone, this is Mohamed Yakub, and this video is going to be an update for my ADC Tama Trigger tutorial. I think this is one of the most important ADC tutorials that you certainly want to learn. ADC Tama Triggers allows you to control the speed of ADC uh, conversion. This is extremely useful in applications where you want to acquire analog data periodically. A good example here is feedback control systems where you need to get a sensor measurement data at a certain sampling rate like every 2 milliseconds, every 5 milliseconds, and so on. At those instances, you would use ADC Tama Trigger. In my demo today, I'm going to show you how to implement this with and without Cubemix. Cubemix part is useful for people who want to do things quickly, and the second part is mainly for students. Ok, let's start with the Cubemix implementation. Click on your project, and select the right board, Steam 32 or 4 or 7 in this case, BGT. On the pinout, we need to enable PA1 and set it to analog input because that's where my potentiometer is connected to. Then I need to enable one of the timers to trigger the ADC. I'm going to go for the timer 2. You just need to select the clock source to internal and you have the option to trigger it with one of the uh, output compare, no output, or just with the normal uh, period elapsed event. I'm just going to use the period elapsed event one. I'm also going to enable my LED, one of my LEDs. That's set for the pinout. Now let's go to the configuration and configure the ADC and the timer. Let's start with the ADC. I want to set the resolution to 8 bits and I don't need to enable any of those modes. And I need to go select an external trigger on the rising edge and the source. We are using timer 2, the trigger output event, not the capture compare. And then I'm also going to change the sampling time to uh, 28 cycles. It's good to increase those uh, sampling time cycles. I explained them in my uh, continuous conversion mode tutorial. So refer to that if you know more details about sampling time. And then I need to enable the ADC interrupt. This is going to be useful. So w whenever the ADC completes a conversion, this will interrupt. And then I can read the value and toggle my LED, for instance. So that's it. Click OK. Uh, next, I need to configure the timer. Uh, I need to set a prescaler to bring the clock down. Uh, so timer 2 is uh, derived from a clock called APP1 and we can refer to it in the clock configurations. So APP1 timer's clock is 16 MHz at the moment so I can use this in my prescaler. Back to the timer. So 16 MHz, when I divide set a prescaler of 16,000 it will bring the speed down to 1 kHz and I want to set the period to let's say 100 so my ADC will trigger every every 100 milliseconds because this is the uh, milliseconds it takes now. So now every 100 milliseconds the ADC will get a value. And I need to set the trigger event selection to uh, trigger output event or update event. And that's everything I need to do. So click OK and you're ready to generate the source code. Give the project a name, I'm going to call it TIMADC. And I'm going to store it this location and select the right IDE. Kyle Microvision 5 in my case and click OK. And once the source code is generated, click on our project and this will take you to Kyle IDE. In Kyle, we need to expand this folder and open the main. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to define a variable to store my ADC returned value in. And since my ADC resolution is 8 bits, this variable would have to be an integer 8 bit. I'm going to call it ADC val. Uh, then in begin number 2, I need to start my timer and start my ADC. To start the timer, use a function called hull tim base start. You start the timer normal without interrupt. And this takes a single parameter, the timer handle type div, which is defined by Cubemix as htim2, as defined at the top here. Then I need to start my ADC, but I need to start the ADC as interrupt. Hull ADC start as interrupt. And this takes a single parameter the ADC handle type diff, which is HADC1. And now I need to define the ADC conversion complete callback. I can find a template in the ADC driver. So go to functions and under ADC, uh, you should find ADC conversion complete callback. Here it is. I need to copy it to my main, but without the weak object. And what I need to do inside here, this one will jump in whenever the ADC uh, get a value converted. So I need to get the value, I need to read the ADC value using a function called hull ADC get value. And this takes a single parameter, the ADC handle type diff. And then I'm going to 
toggle uh, an LED. And this is everything I need to do. I'm ready to compile the code, load it to the board, and then we'll have a look at the board to see the LED uh, speed, and then we'll look at Steam Studio to read the ADC value. Okay, very good. I can see my LED blinking at the right rate. Now let's go to Steam Studio read value. So on Steam Studio, the first thing I need to do is to uh, navigate to the project file. So click on this and go to your project file location. And you need to go to MDKR, go to TIMADC, the name of the project, and you will see .axf file. And this is the file you want to load. And this one will have all the variables in your system. And I want to read ADC value. Click on port and this will be added in here. So right click on this and send to variable viewer1. I want to set the mode to table. All you need to do is to start this and reset your steam board. And here we go, I can see the ADC value. Let me play around with my potentiometer. Perfect, going down to zero, and back again high. Very good. And this is how to implement ADC timer trigger with QMX. If that's all you're looking for, you may stop the video here. And as always, if you found it helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now I'm going to walk you through setting up a project without QMX to implement the same thing. Uh, because we're not using QMX, we have to do everything in Carl Microvision. So click on project and select a new Microvision project. And now you need to select a location to store your project files in. I'm going to store mine here. I'm going to call it TIMADC no cube. And now I need to select the board, Steam 320407 VGT. And now enabling the software components, so go to Simsys and enable the core software component. And on device, you need to enable a startup. And on Cube Framework, we need to enable Classic. This requires other softwares, I can add them by clicking Resolve. And on Steam Hull, I need to enable my ADC and the timer software component and that's everything I need to do and so click OK you need to go to project to see the files and as you can see Carl Microvision added few files in here mainly the Hull library files but it didn't add a main file so we have to add it manually so right click on source group add a new item it's a C file and I need to call it main on my main the first thing I need to do is to include the Hull library header file then I need to define the main function, and then the infinite while loop at the end. And now I need to do three things. I need to set up my GPI open, so to enable the ADC pin, to enable the LED pin. And I also need to configure my timer and configure my ADC. I'm going to do these three things in three separate functions that I call GPIO config, ADC config, and TIM config. And on the definition of the first function, GPIO config, the first thing I need to do is to enable GPIO port clocks. So, enabling port A clock that has got the analog input and port D that has got the LED. Then I need to define a GPIO init type diff to configure my GPIO pins. I'm going to call it my pin init. And then the first thing I need to configure it to select the pin. Let me configure my ADC pins first. So, ADC is connected to PA1, so it's pin number 1. And the mode to analog. And now I can call hull, hull GPIO init function to implement those initialization. And this is on port A, so GPIO port A and the handle type diff. And now similar thing for the LED pin configuration. I'm just going to copy and paste it over. It's the same thing, but pins are 12, 13, 14 and 15 to enable the four LEDs and the mode to output pushpull. And then we call the init function on port D. After that, we can enable the cystic interrupt. This is to be able to use hull delay functions. It's a good practice to enable it at every project. Although we're not going to use hull delay functions, but I'm going to enable it here. Uh, and finally, on this function, we've got to enable the ADC interrupt. And in the definition of the ADC config function, first things first, we need to enable ADC clock. After that, we've got to initialize our ADC. Uh, and for that, we need to define a ADC handle type diff, but we need to define it globally. So I'm going to declare it at the top outside the main. It's ADC handle type diff. I'm going to call it my ADC handle. So ADC basic config. First thing I need to do is to set the instance to ADC uh, one because we're using ADC number one. And then 
we need to initialize some parameters so we need to initialize first thing the cloth prescaler to um, and the minimum prescaler is divided by two this is just going to divide the ADC mother clock not the timer uh, trigger clock uh, and after that the uh, continuous conversion mode to disable because we're just using the uh, external trigger mode and then a series of initializations that you can pause the video and copy them over so setting data aligned to right, disabling discontinuous mode, disable DMA, end of conversion flag, external trigger to TR go, uh, trigger on the rising edge, conversion to one resolution to 8 bits, and scan mode disable. And finally we call ADC init function to implement those initialization to the ADC. And next we need to do the ADC channel configuration, and for that we need to define a channel config type diff that I called my channel config, and then implement a series of configurations. So my channel config dot channel is ADC channel one because it's on pin number one, uh, offset to zero, rank to one, sampling time to twenty eight cycles, just like what I explained in Cubemix. And finally, we call hull ADC config channel to implement those configurations, and that's everything for the ADC config function. And on the definition of timer config function, first thing we need to do is to enable timer to clock, and then do a timer basic initialization. And for that, we would need to uh, again define a timer handle type diff uh, globally at the top here uh, that I called my timer handle uh, and we use that to initialize the timer so for the initialization we first need to set the uh, instance to uh, timer2 so tim2 and then initialize uh, first thing the clock division to 1 uh, and then a series of initialization so counter mode to uh, count mode up, period to 16,000, prescaler to 100, and then we call hull TIM base in it to implement those initialization to the timer. And then we need to do the clock source config, and for that we need to define a type diff, clock config type diff that I called my clock source config, and select the clock source to internal clock, and then call my TIM config clock source uh, function to implement the, these configurations. And finally, we need to do the TIM master config. And for that, again, we need to define a type diff, master config type diff that I called my master config, and some configurations. So the uh, output trigger to TRGO update, uh, slave mode disable, and then we call master config synchronization function to implement those uh, initializations. And one more thing we've got to do is to define the Cystic handler and the ADC IRQ handler. These two, these just to link the device handler to the HAL library handling mechanism for both cystic interrupt and ADC interrupt. Now let's scroll up and implement our main function. So first we need to uh, call in the configuration functions, HAL init and then GYO config, ADC config and TIM config. Now we are in the same page as Cubemix project setup. Now we can just copy the things over that we did in Cubemix to here and it's going to be exactly the same thing. So let me just copy them very quickly. So here we go. All we did in Cubemix is that we declare a variable to store the ADC value in. Uh, we started the time base and we started the ADC as interrupt. And then we define an ADC interrupt callback, conversion complete callback at the end. And that's everything. So let me compile the code, load it to the board and convince you that it works the same. Uh, you might encounter a problem loading to the board exactly and that's because we're not selecting the right debugger so let's go to options for target debug and select a stealing debugger you might have already figured this out if you watched some of my previous videos and then go to settings trace we need to enable trace core clock to 16 megahertz and click ok now it should load fine very good now let's have a look at the board we'll have a look at the leds blinking first to check the rate and then we'll watch the value in STM Studio. Okay great, the LED looks like it's blinking at the right rate. Now on STM Studio you need to load the NoQ project. So click on this and this one and you need to navigate to your project file. I store it in your NoQ, go to objects and you will find the .axf file. Uh, we need to import the ADC value and run the, run the code. Oh, sorry, I need to, uh, no, it's the same name, so I can just run the code. Now, playing around with my STM potentiometer, perfect, you see the value changing. All right, and that's how to implement ADC timer trigger without Cubemix. 
And this indeed brings me to the end of my tutorial today. And as always, if you found it helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.